Okay, what we have here is the Dietan Mamba T40 ESC inadvertently lifted the signal pad, which is this one right here. And if you look close, that is the hole that passes through to the other side, to the trace, which then carries the signal to the rest of the board. So we're going to try to repair this. What we need is a couple strands of wire. This is just ESC wire that I trimmed off of um, another. Uh, actually, it came off these motors. So, so you can see that strands of wire. What I'm going to try to do is get the wire into a little tiny hole. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but there is the wire coming out of the very itty bitty hole. And what I'm going to do now is add a little heat, try to get it to solder inside. Uh, and the point here is trying to keep it from falling out, and I can use the wire to then identify where the signal wire is going. Because uh, ideally, we can solder to the component on the board. Um, I suspect by looking at the trace on the underside that it actually comes back onto this side and it's underneath of the shielding, in which case we're going to be out of luck. Uh, but if I can get more strands of wire in the hole, then that would give me something I can solder to, or at a minimum I can verify that yes, the trace I'm looking at on the back side is the signal trace, and I can scrape the paint off and solder to that wire fell out so I cleaned it with solvent exposed the hole again and then this time I put three wires in again they're very very tiny like hairs and they're just going into the the hole that was underneath of the signal pad and we'll try to solder these in hopefully they'll stay it may take a couple tries Key here is to be patient, but I'm just taking the iron and kind of brushing the solder down the wires. I'm trying to work it into that hole. Added a little bit of flux to help it flow. Alright, let's see if that's stuck. Yeah, it feels stuck. And here you don't want to pull too hard because there's not much holding it and you don't want to yank those wires out. Okay, so the next thing that I tried to do is I put one lead on my multimeter on the wires that we installed. And then I checked every pin and surface uh, on this side of the board to see if anything was connected. And, um, Sure enough, uh, as I suspected, the trace goes right through to here and then onto the other side. So we're not going to be able to find the spot where the trace goes. So we have two choices. I can either expose the trace and try to solder directly to it, or I can find a way to secure the wire. So this is my signal wire. Secure it down and then attach the wires that I've inserted uh, and do it in a way that it's not going to come loose with vibration. Uh, tried this earlier and broke the wires because I wasn't being gentle. Uh, we'll try it again and see if we can make it work. 
first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some conformal coating. Mine's uh, old and expired, so I just grabbed a chunk of it because it's quite literally jello. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it in place and then hit it with a heat gun, get it to melt. And the idea here is I want it to kind of coat everything um, to protect the wires where they go into the hole. And then I'm going to shove my signal wire down just enough into it to uh, uh, hold in place. And then the excess of the wires I added, I'm going to take them over, lay them on top of the signal wire, and then solder it together. All right, let's hit it with a heat gun and see how well it melts. Okay, I've got the blob of conformal coating protecting so that we shouldn't be grounding on the shielding or on the positive and negative wires. Now we're going to solder the little wires to the big wire. Uh, again, want to be careful here. We don't want to yank or pull anything out. Okay, once you've got everything where you like it, put the heat shrink back on, heat it up, and this will help hold the wire in place and keep it from vibrating loose. Keep everything in position, put everything back together, uh, then we're going to hook it, apply power, and hook it up to beta flight, and see if it works. Okay, the moment of truth. I'm going to look for this motor to have both sets of beeps. Well, actually all four of them should have both sets of beeps. That one in particular. And that looks like a win. Outstanding. So... Next, I'm going to hook it up to beta flight and make sure everything spins properly. Uh, spoiler alert, if you are watching this video, then it worked. Uh, thanks for watching.